Thank you, Tony. So it's one year later, and we are back. We haven't given up. So, <laughs> so last year, like A-Frame was like six months old, and uh, now we are over a year old. And uh, we are very happy with how things are going. Uh, the goals are pretty much the same. So A-Frame, uh, the goal of A-Frame is uh, scratching our own each. So we are web developers, and we found like 3D graphics, and we are overwhelming and complicated. And we decided to do a tool that we would like to use. So there's a lot of free develop there's a bunch of free developers out there. Uh, most of them they don't do web development, and there's like at least an order of magnitude more web developers than 3D developers. And A-Frame targets that community. So we want uh, VR is a new medium, and we think that it's gonna be a superset of all the existing media. And all the web developers that do 2D stuff today will have to relearn, to learn new skills. So A-Frame is there to onboard these people in the new medium and providing tools that uh, feel familiar to the workflows and concepts that they already uh, know. So after a year, uh, those are some numbers. So we have more than 5,000 stars on GitHub, uh, 3,200 members on Slack, and we have hundreds of projects that we feature on our weekly blog post, um, and over 100 uh, contributors already on the, on the A-Frame repository. Um, last week, just released, uh, we released a, a, a resource for people to learn and actually to also teach A-Frame, and Kevin is going to talk about it. Yeah, as Diego mentioned, we had to onboard all the web developers who don't know 3D into kind of this new new scary world. And that's not just for web developers as well, it's people from all sorts of disciplines. Um, that includes educators, uh, native graphics developers, creative coders, artists, designers. Uh, they need a way to learn this and they might not necessarily know what we all use in web development. So we created an A-Frame School. And this was kind of in the back of our minds for a while, but we presented at IEEE VR and we gave a workshop as kind of a pilot. Uh, so it just takes people step by step through learning with VR and A-Frame. Uh, we start to use Glitch as a new kind of tool for learning. It just came out last week. And well, let's, <laughs> yes, yeah. welcome to the web. Uh, yeah. we, are, we are big proponents of the fashion-driven development. So yeah, pick the coolest tools you can find out there. Uh, so <laughs> it, it lets you um, pretty much develop online and publish it instantly, share with other people. You can remix existing projects and uh, give it on URL. Multiple, multiple people can collaborate on the same project. Uh, so we have a Hello World. So you just click here to remix it. And then you remix it here. And then it'll create a project for you. And right there, it's already hosted. So if I go to, it gave me the name PitchCran. Yeah. But if I do like uh, just HTML5 demo. Yeah, it holds, it holds your front end, back end code, and also your, all your assets. So HTML5 demo that glitched on me, and if everyone takes out their phone, they will see the site just published just like that. And if I made a change, so if I just changed the color of the box to red, and refresh the page, it will change to red. And if you open this on your phone, you would see the changes happen live. So in the demos that are going to give up, uh, we encourage you to open your phones and check it out and see what we're doing in real time. Uh, so I go back. So it will take people to the, even the things that we take for granted, like just how to position an object in 3D space, rotate, add objects. Um, we'll teach the tools and workflows. And a hairy part is getting assets uh, uploaded and hosted via with cores. It's something that people run a lot into. So we, we try to remove all these roadblocks. And that also goes for um, yeah. doing models as well. So we have GLTF support for models. And we're going to take people through how to find models, how to import them. So if I remix this lesson and view that code. Yeah. Yeah, one of the main points when people start that people that don't have like a web development background is setting up a server, setting up all your files on your local machine, and being able to display a website. So in Glitch, like, 
smooths out all this process and gives you some HTML and JavaScript that you can edit directly in the browser and see the results immediately with zero setup on your machine. So this, this demo, this talk's actually yeah. about glitch, not about A-frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, a glitch is not the sponsoring. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I guess I should actually talk a little bit about A-frame. Um, for those who don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I got we are excited. excited. We are excited. It's the new tool, right? So new toy. Uh, no, that's uh, we are giving up uh, this gla the glitch team. No. <laughs> <laughs> so A-Frame is a web framework for building VR experiences. Uh, <laughs> you can build it with just HTML, so there's no build steps. And the great thing is you don't need any local servers or any of that stuff. Uh, with just uh, you just kind of have HTML, you do just a scene. You have um, it sets up everything for you: your render loop, your lights, your camera, um, everything that you would need to do in a traditional 3D scene without any JavaScript. And within there, you just place elements like a box or a sphere. And it's pretty easy for just about anyone. Uh, even kids can do it. Yeah. And, and if I go back to the slides. kids are better than us. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you want, uh, it's something that we just started building. So we're going to make it really, really easy for people to yeah. learn. And we're finding yeah. some success in it. Um, and just for an over uh, high level view of A-Frame and its little tech stack, uh, underneath, it's all based on what the browser provides, so WebGL and WebVR API. And on top of that, we use 3GS um, by Mr. Dube in the room. Um, A-Frame is actually a framework for 3GS, so it doesn't necessarily hide it away. Um, we, it works; they work together. And on top of that, we have an any component system layer, which yeah. we'll talk about, uh, where people can build their own components and extend it and to do whatever they want. And on top of that, you have your HTML layer. And from there, you can use any uh, framework you want. You can use React or Vue, D3 or Angular, Ember, whatever, what developers like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're trying to do a frame as, as un unopinionated as possible, so it integrates with all the tools that web developers use today. So yeah, and at any layer, you can access any um, part of the stack. So a frame, yeah. you have full access to 3GS for all the web APIs. You can do WebGL, and you have all full access to the WebVR data. And uh, we also have a tool called A-Frame React. Um, if you, it's kind of the hot thing, I guess. Uh, so you can just kind of build uh, scenes using React. It's kind of like a thin binding. But the beautiful thing is that you can still use all the good pieces of A-Frame. So if someone creates an A-Frame component for particle systems, you just import it via NPM, and then you just attach it to your entity here. Yeah. And um, it's kind of great because it lets A-Frame do all the heavy lifting in 3JS, all the heavy lifting for, 3JS and, or for 3D and VR. And it lets React do what it's good at, which is uh, views and state. Yeah. yeah, so at the core of A-Frame, we have an entity component architecture. When HTML was invented, it was a declarative language to structure text documents. And the range of components that you have there is limited. You have paragraphs, you have headers, um, you have buttons, you have images, you have links. But in, in VR, like this is much more richer. So this is not going to scale to have a, a tag for every single semantic uh, meaning. So um, an entity component system scales much better, where you have like a, an actual just uh, a one tag. It's called a entity in the case of A-Frame. And you can configure that tag uh, by adding components to it. So we have like a whole connection of different components that you can add to, to entities. You can add positions, rotations. You can make a, an entity to be like the, the controllers of your hands. You can add materials. You can make a, 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 an entity to emit light, to emit sound, uh, to load like um, uh, models like Colada, OBJs, and GLTF. Uh, uh, an entity behave like a cursor to select things like fog uh, that adds fog in the skin, and there's like a bunch of uh, components that the community is creating right now. And uh, we have a registry uh, that is supposed to be the place where you can go if you want to find good components that the community has created. So this has allows us to scale much better because we are a very small team. Uh, and uh, we cannot cover all the ground, so we rely on, <laughs> on the one, two, two. And, uh, and uh, we cannot cover all the functionality that people are asking for, so we rely on the community to yeah. fill all those gaps. And so this is a community build unity yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, like community, community driven uh, unity in the so web. Some components include like particle systems, physics, sleep motion. Uh, yeah. Uh, teleport controls yeah. is pretty much anything you need for a VR or a 3D scene. Yeah. Yeah. So the registry um, allows us like 
to um, to consume like very like very complex pieces of code in a very concise and declarative manner. Like in this case, we have uh, the Liphan uh, component that is made by Don McCurdy that he's in the room. Uh, so you um, set up your entity. You just like drop the JS file that implements that component, and you just add lip hand, select the hand, and yeah. this is what it'll show up in scene. You can just have hand, control hand controllers in your scene just with two lines of markup. So, yeah. um, so we'll have a demo of showing off some of the components. So we'll just remix another one. Oh, and also um, keep this URL on your phone, sfhtml5.glitch.me, if I can get that URL. Yeah. So <coughs> besides to make like uh, VR content creation easier, we are always trying to find ways to make web development, development, web development uh, easier and more efficient to go from idea to prototype as fast as we can. So I'll just name it HTML5. No, someone took it. Oh, did I take it? HTML56.glitch.me um, <laughs> will be the, n <laughs> the new URL. OK, and we're showing off a scene by Ada Rose Edwards from Samsung. So it's just all HTML, and you view it on your phone. You should be able to kind of do the magic window thing, and you have a cardboard, you can just drop it in. Um, but if I want to take, say, uh, just change something, and everyone can just see it live, so I'll go find the text. So, aesthetic. So I'll change this to SFHTML6. And I will change this to, say, A frame. So if you reload the page, for those who have it open, you should be able to see a change instantly. <laughs> and um, if you had a Vive or a Rift, um, you could open this up and you can walk around and uh, use your controllers and stuff. And I, uh, also, we have something called the inspector. So every yeah, yeah every single scene on iframe. Um, so we want to keep the spirit of the web app uh, alive in, in iframe, and so that like you are used, like if you open a page on your web uh, on your browser, you can always invoke the developer tools and inspect and learn how this this page is is um, is made. So in the case of A-Frame, if you open any A-Frame scene, you have a shortcut that uh, on the Mac. I'm not sure uh, if I, oh yeah. yeah. So any any A-Frame scene, if you uh, invoke like Control Alt I, mm -hmm. you can open this uh, this inspector, Visual Inspector, that is injected on the page. Uh, uh, when you uh, press the shortcut. So it doesn't add like uh, extra weight to, to the library itself. If you don't use it, it's not there. Um, yeah, so what Kevin is doing is, is adding physics um, to the scene. So that, that drop down that you see, he's selecting uh, components. That list is populated from the registry. Those are components that people made that you can uh, uh, explore, use, and play with them within the inspector. And if I go back to the scene, the physics will yeah. just work. It was just injected, um, yeah. no coding required. And that can be done for any scene um, that you yeah. see. So just hit Control or I, or on the A-frame homepage, there'll be buttons to pop it open. Yeah, yeah. talking about tools to, to make development easier, uh, we are going to release a, a, co a motion capture component that allows you to record yourself in VR. So you can actually replay uh, what you recorded and allows you to develop without having a headset. So that's crazy, just your phone. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you can you can record any so the camera and hands and hands so uh, we'll uh, show the office A frame dash mocap. Yeah, dash we recorded that this morning, right? <laughs> this is this is not a video, it's actually the recorded interactions uh, that we are replaying. And um, so yeah. if I open the inspect no, sorry. I don't Sorry. want to open the inspector. <laughs> I want to open the DOM inspector, but in the browser. What's the shortcut? <laughs> I'm a Windows person now, so. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, it's VR made me this way. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so right now, so this is I'm inspecting uh, the A-frame markup that is on the DOM inspector, and what I'm gonna do right now, the the scene is running, all the interactions are playing. And then I go here, and I can, while the scene is running, I can change the, the color of the highlight of those cubes. I can make it red, green. Yeah, so, and. Yeah. So oh. it's just an easy way to uh, develop VR on the go. You take a recording, you go yeah. out to the coffee shop, and you can keep on developing your scene. Yeah, there's a lot of friction, like, like setting up your headset, and many times you don't even have it. Uh, 
So it's, it's like solving our own problems at the end of the day. But yeah. Co no, as in like, um, so you record actions in the Vive? Because when you develop, you don't want to get into the Vive every sing single time you make a code file change. Yeah. Um, you don't want to take the headset on and off. Do you do the same actions over and over? You just want to record it. And using that one recording, you can um, replay it and keep developing on it, or use it as a, a test case for regressions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's this motion capture component. It allows you like to create these kind of experiences. This is a this is a demo that that they are gonna be. So the motion capture component is going to be used as an animation tool to animate your, your own characters, right? This is a, a demo that we are going to be releasing next week that is a dancing experience. So just put your headset on, hit play, and you can record yourself and, and share it with your friends what you, you've done. So, what? What's up? Oh, we'll show uh, it, it off. It was iframe.io um, slash a Saturday night. Yeah. But, uh, next week, next week. Yeah, next week. So yeah, you, you can actually <laughs> see, like, those are humans. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can tell it's by their body language who's who, who's dancing. Yeah, it's bringing motion <laughs> capture to the masses, right? Like before, to do motion capture, you had to have those comp uh, very expensive and uh, and complicated rigs. But right now, you have like a headset with controllers. You can yeah. you can animate your characters like video game studios do. Right. So. Um, so I'll run through really quick some of the coolest A-frame examples that we see in the community. So you go to a slash blog every week. I curate or I just take everything that people have done and show it off. Um, so we made a painter, which is like a tilt brush clone uh, for A-Frame on the web. Uh, a lot of journalism use cases, Amnesty International UK for the barrel bombings in Aleppo, Syria. Um, Washington Post did one for a journey to Mars. Uh, there's a tool called Guri VR, which lets you code in English. It's tough. Uh, <laughs> For some people, <laughs> um, there's a sandbox where you can just like uh, build a city using uh, 400 models. It's drag and drop. Um, here's one I made. It's kind of like a Minecraft -y demo. There's actually a guide on CSS tricks, so you can just build blocks, place them, and jump on top of them. Um, museums. This one's really cool. Works on mobile or Vive or Rift or desktop, whatever. Um, data visualizations. You can take facets and then just pop them to your scene. Um, Space Pirate Trainer clone for fun that we made. Uh, KCE and our team made this UI widget, so you can take these components and just pop into your scene and use them as this, so rotary snubs, um, virtual calculators. Uh, it works with AR, pretty cool. Um, big use case is real estate. This one's being, A-Frame's being used in production for this one company, and uh, medical education. Someone used sleep motion controls to kind of teach people about the heart and organs. Um, so. Yeah, join us uh, in the community. Like we have already contributors from Samsung, Microsoft, Google, Mozilla. So yeah. you are welcome to join us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is